Hello and welcome to GameSack. A few months back, I took a look at the Evercade console here, and while it's certainly an interesting concept, some might say I was a little bit hard on it. Was I? I don't think I was. I mean, I reported it as I saw it. And if you want to watch that episode, well, the link is in the description, unless you're watching this on an app that doesn't let you see the description. Anyway, there has been a few firmware updates since I made that episode, as well as some new game cartridges, so I figured I could show you four of those new cartridges and every single game on them while using the new firmware. So let's get to this. First up is Xeno Crisis and Tanglewood. This cartridge only has two games on it, Xeno Crisis and Tanglewood, both for the Genesis. These are both fairly recent games made by indie developers. First up is Xeno Crisis from Bitmap Bureau. This twin stick shooter was originally released in 2019. You take control of a marine who needs to shoot down room after room of aliens. It controls similar to Smash TV or Total Carnage if you've ever played those on the Super Nintendo. Playing it with a Genesis controller is odd, but if you use the six button controller, it kind of worked okay. On the Evercade, the button layout is the same as the Super NES, so it's a natural fit. The options for the game don't even let you change the controller layout, mainly because you don't need to. You can change them in the game's own option screen, however. Despite it feeling more natural, I had a hard time with this one, maybe more so than I usually do. I don't know what it is, maybe I'm just rusty, I haven't played this one for a while. Regardless though, it's an amazing game with excellent music. Hopefully I'll cover the Genesis and Dreamcast versions more properly in the future, and I can only dream about getting the Neo Geo version. Tanglewood is a puzzle platformer from Big Evil Corporation, released in 2018. I can definitely say that this is a well-made and well-thought-out game, but it's really just not my cup of tea. You play as a fox who must do stuff to save the world or something like that. I get the feeling that maybe you're dreaming all of this because you just fall back asleep at the beginning of the game. Anyway, you need to push lots of stuff around and collect their powers and figure out how to get past all of the obstacles in each area. The menu for the game lets you reassign the Evercade buttons, thank God. I sure wish the music played more often than it does. If you like puzzle platformers, you'll probably enjoy this. Next is the Atari Lynx Collection 1. This one has 17 Atari Lynx games, many of them lesser known or even new games developed by indie studios. There's lots of stuff here, so let's start with Awesome Golf. Despite the title, this is not an awesome golf game, and the swing meter will take some time to master. However, I really do like the scaling graphics when you hit the ball. It's slow, but it could be worse, I guess. Basket Brawl is kind of a mess. You're trying to play basketball and fight all at the same time, and neither of these activities is done well here. It's very hard to tell what's going on. I don't like it. Crystal Mines 2 Buried Treasure is fun, though. You play as a robot trying to get all of the treasure in each area and then find the exit. It controls well and is actually quite fun. Not only does it have music, but it's almost good. Cyber Virus is basically a first-person shooter. Wander around and shoot the bad guys. Good thing you have a map to find them. After they're all dead and there's nothing on the map, enjoy the desolate, lonely world you're now stuck in because there seems to be no exit anywhere. I don't like it. Dracula the Undead reminds me of Maniac Mansion, only much, much worse. The control scheme is awful. I don't like it. Gordo 106 is okay. You play as a lab monkey freeing other lab animals. I feel that it could use some more thought in the level design, but it's still worth trying out, I think. I sure wish that the scrolling were smoother. Ishido Way of the Stones is a puzzle game. Try to match all of the stones. I didn't like it on the Genesis, and I don't like it much here, though honestly, I'd rather play this version over the one on the Genesis. Jimmy Connors Tennis is okay, I suppose. It plays a decent game of tennis with high quality voices. 15. All. Jimmy Connors may be a great guy, but Jimmy Connors Tennis is no Pete Sampras Tennis. Pete Sampras Tennis! Loops is a puzzle game of some kind. I don't care much for puzzle games and I didn't care for this one. I guess maybe you're supposed to create a loop? I don't know and I'm not interested. 
Malibu Bikini Volleyball sure starts out promising. Yeah. But no matter what I do, I can't seem to hit the damn ball. I'm better at volleyball in real life than I am at this game, and I suck at real volleyball. Mega Pack Volume 1 has lots of little nonsense-like things in it or something. Like an LCD-like minigame. It also lets you fiddle with the sound. Unfortunately, there seems to be no way to exit out to the game's menu. Power Factor is a mess. You float around like an idiot shooting nothing while avoiding hazards and collecting fuel. If you love loud white noise blasting in your ears, you'll love this game. Remnant Planar Wars is a 3D space shooter. You fly around trying to shoot things. The problem is, is that this is absolutely as fast as you can shoot. Yeah, I don't like it. Super Asteroids Missile Command are Lynx versions of the old arcade games. Honestly, these are both pretty fun for what they are. I prefer Missile Command over Asteroids, but they both kept me playing. Scrapyard Dog is a fun and challenging little platformer, if a bit primitive. The funny thing is that I had a much easier time playing on the Evercade than I did on a real Atari Lynx. Give this one a go for sure. Super Squeak seems to be a puzzle game. I'm roaming around changing the color of some blocks and then I enter a shop. I don't seem to have much money. I try to exit the shop, but then I'm told I don't have enough money. What the hell? I pick restart and again, I don't have enough money to restart. I do not like this game. Finally, we have Zump, the final run. Here, you need to get all of the blue blocks, I guess. Then the stage ends, except for this one where I can't get them all or I fall off and die. Obviously I'm missing something, but I'm just not really interested in this one. Overall, there are a few good games on here and several dumb ones. I definitely like being able to play the Lynx games on a screen that is much better than the original Lynx systems. But what I would like to see is some vertical Lynx games, you know, like Gauntlet 3, you playing like this or, or maybe like that. But what I'd be curious is to see how they handle the HDMI output of such games. Anyway, let's take a look at the other two cartridges. The Atari Lynx Collection 2 features eight of the more well-known Lynx games. Blue Lightning is probably the best game on the platform. You fly a completely generic blue jet and shoot down generic enemies in the sky and on the ground. I was always blown away by the scaling graphics in this game for its time. I just wish it had some music. California Games just lets you play one of four different mini games, none of which are particularly exciting. I like the variety, but I could never really get much into it. Checkered Flag is an F1 racing game, and it honestly doesn't have much to offer, at least not for me. This one could have been so much more. Chips Challenge is an awesome puzzle game where you need to guide Chip around to collect the computer chips. But you also need to collect certain colored keys or items to help you along your way. It can get pretty challenging, hence the name, and fortunately there's a password feature. Electrocop is a great tech demo of the Lynx's scaling capabilities which were cutting edge back in 1989. Seriously, even the Super Nintendo can't do scaling like this. Unfortunately, as a game, it's another one that I really can't get a whole lot out of because the gameplay could be designed a lot better, I feel. Gates of Zendikon is a slow horizontal shooter where not a whole lot actually happens. It's fairly easy as well. There are a ton of stages though, as well as a password feature. There's not a whole lot here that I would label as exciting. Todd's Adventures in Slime World is a neat little exploration game. Be sure to wash all of the slime off of you if you want to stay alive. This one will definitely keep you busy for a while. Lastly, we have Zarlur Mercenary. This is a vertical shooter that's fairly okay. You can zap enemies with a homing laser if you're close enough. You can also shoot little people on the ground, which is always fun. Other than that, it's pretty average. I also want to mention that when you're playing Lynx games in handheld mode, it takes up more than just the 4x3 area of the screen. So I guess it's good that the Evercade screen is a bit wider. If they ever get Game Boy Advance games on the thing, this would probably be really helpful as well. Finally, we have the Oliver Twins Collection, which has 11 games. Basically all Comerica NES games without a license attached, so no Micro Machines. I do not want to play this one. They absolutely love Dizzy to no end in Europe. Not so much over here. 
In North America, we tend to like good games instead. I think it's a cultural thing. Let's start out with Treasure Island Dizzy. First of all, I wish you could switch the A and B buttons around. I want to jump with the Evercade A button and use X as the action button. It really doesn't matter much though because I would still not like this game. Next is Wonderland Dizzy. This one has music that will tear your ears up in no uncertain terms. Maybe a bit better than Treasure Land Dizzy, but I still don't like it. This is BMX Simulator. As someone who did a lot of BMXing in my youth, this does not simulate it very well. I don't like it. Now for Dizzy the Adventurer. Again, you need to pick up items and use them like Shadowgate or a point and click game. It's better than the others, but this still isn't my thing. Who wants to play as an egg anyway? This is Dream World Pogi. It's a very European platformer. It's not very good. Hey, what do you want me to do, lie to you? Here's the fantastic adventures of Dizzy. This is the fantastic one, huh? Okay, I don't like it. This one is called Firehawk. This is actually a good game if you can believe that. I know I'm having a hard time believing it. It's basically an overhead version of Choplifter. Fly around, destroy enemy stuff, free and rescue hostages, and then fly them back to safety. Not bad if I'm being honest. This is the best game on this cartridge, bar none. Next is Go Dizzy Go. This is an almost Pac-Man type of game where you need to collect the fruit and avoid or defeat enemies. Gotta say, this isn't awful or anything. In fact, it's probably the best thing Dizzy has ever been in by a long shot. This is as good as it gets, the high point of his career. Then there's Mystery World Dizzy. Damn is tough keeping track of all these Dizzy games. I'll make it easy on you. I don't like it. This one is called Panic Dizzy. Obviously, it's some sort of puzzle game. Like I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of puzzle games. And sadly, this one isn't doing much to help me appreciate the genre. Thanks, but I'll pass. Finally, we have Super Robin Hood. This one is okay, but nothing here is really above average at all. It's certainly better than any of the Dizzy games. Also, every one of the games on this cartridge appears blurry and you can't play without the fuzzy filter on top of the graphics. It goes without saying that I don't care much for this cart, but if you live in Europe, you'll probably want to buy two or three copies of this because you love Dizzy. You know, I'm just giving everyone a hard time, right? These games must have some merit to them, otherwise so many people wouldn't like them. But right now, today, is not really a day I want to spend with all of these games. The last thing I want to talk about is that the Evercade has been through a few firmware updates since the last time I looked at it. Using the newest one which came out recently, I have had no issues at all with the audio like I did before. The HDMI problems seem to be gone as far as I can tell. The newer firmwares also have some control options you can choose which helps a lot, though I would still like to see it completely customizable if possible. There's also now a noise when you create a save state so that you know when it happened, and it also has a timestamp of sorts. The screen can also be set to a slightly brighter mode now. Well, there you have it. The Evercade is definitely made better by the recent firmware updates, unsurprisingly, and you should obviously install them if you have one of these things. It's still not perfect. I, like I said before, I want to see more in the way of button customization. I'd like to be able to customize any button to any of the Evercade buttons, but it's a step in the right direction. I'd also like to be able to disable the various filters that are applied on top of the graphics and the various emulators. Like, I don't want to see the Comerica games being so fuzzy. I don't know why I have to play them in a fuzzy way if I'm playing out the HDMI. But again, who knows what the future holds. What features would you like to see for the Evercade and what games would you like to see, you know, ported to this thing? Let me know and thank you for watching this short little bonus episode of GameSat.